Our Old Testament lesson today is Joel chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Joel wrote this after a locust plague devastated the country. He viewed the catastrophe as a dire warning and calls upon people to repent. Put on sackcloth and lament, you priests. Wail, you ministers of the altar. Come, pass the night in sackcloth, you ministers of my God. Grain offering and drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. This is God's word for us. Thanks be to God. Good morning, friends. So good to be with you this morning. Oh, my goodness. Were you listening carefully when Miss Betty read that scripture? She used the word lament. Lament? What, what's a lament? As I was reading that scripture and I was thinking about it, two things came to mind. One, they also talked about sackcloth. Sackcloth is a very itchy kind of fabric, kind of like burlap. Maybe about like this lace that is on my shirt and there's a little bit under that protects my skin so I don't have the scratchy lace against my skin. Sackcloth would make people feel itchy and uncomfortable. Why would, why would the scripture say wear sackcloth and lament? Well, it was troubled times. In Joel's day, there had been this terrible plague of locusts and everything had just gone awry. Not unlike COVID time for us. And the word called them to come to the temple and wear the sackcloth and itchy clothing to remind them to lament. The second thing that came to mind was when my children were little, when they were toddlers, and they would just be frustrated and everything would be going wrong and they were just unhappy and they would just, wah, wah. And you know, sometimes as a, an adult, as their mom, when I was feeling frustrated, I thought, I wish I could just sit down and go, wow, lament is crying, is sadness. And sometimes we need to lament. We need to lament losses in our lives, things that, that aren't the way we want them to be, maybe not the way God intended them to be. But laments don't last forever. The crying never lasted forever. And so we think about the times when we need to come to God and just cry it out. And God hears those cries. I think God even welcomes those cries because God sees that as we're paying attention to what's happening around us in the world with our family. So when things are going wrong, it's all right to come to God and offer that lament, just let it all out. And I think 
as we do that, we find that as we let the bad feelings, the sad feelings, all of those feelings go, it makes space for God to come in and offer us peace. Let's have a prayer together. Gracious God, we thank you that you accept every one of our emotions, no matter what they are. We offer our laments for times of sadness and loss. And we know that as we let those things go, we make space for your peace to come into our hearts and minds and lives. Thank you for Jesus, who was a model of how to lament, who was a model of how to live for you. We pray in his name. Amen. All right, friends, I'll see you next time. Good Lord, let the news, the good news come, not only in word and in power, but with the full assurance of your Holy Spirit. Amen. John Steinbeck's classic novel, The Grapes of Wrath, recounts the story. So does the movie by the same name starring a young Henry Fonda. Grandparents and great-grandparents who grew up in Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota in 1931 also tell of that year's drought and grasshopper plague. Now, droughts can often precede grasshoppers because the lack of water creates conditions ripe for the exponential development of these destructive swarms. Although we call them locusts, they're nothing like the cicadas that burrow into the earth and make their noisy appearance every 17 years as they're doing right now in some sections of the United States. According to National Geographic, grasshopper plagues travel in 460 square mile swaths. That's roughly an area from the Delaware River at Morrisville in Bucks County to the Susquehanna River at Harrisburg, and from the Maryland border to an area just north of Reading, a huge area. Imagine that many insects. 80 to 160 million of them pack each square mile, consuming 423 million pounds of plants daily. Wow. Science allows us to understand this biological phenomenon today. But even so, it's really difficult to get our heads wrapped around such incredible facts. Imagine, though, if you're a farmer in the Midwest during the 1930s. Or better still, imagine if you're an ancient Israelite without science to help you understand reality. Terrifying. Grain crops, grapevines, the two staples of food and drink for persons in the ancient Near East were utterly destroyed in Joel's day. That devastation not only posed a physical survival threat, but a spiritual survival threat too. And I say that because offerings of wine and grain were also staples of Jewish temple worship. So, here's the practical matter, if they believed that God was angry with them, and that's why this plague was sent, how could the chosen people apologize and placate and mollify God's wrath without offerings? It just added insult to injury. In June of 2021, most Americans believe that we are emerging from a 21st century plague called the novel coronavirus 19. It's not so much that people blame God nowadays, but humans still look for someone to blame. Have you watched the news? Well, discovering the origins of COVID-19 can certainly help prevent future outbreaks of dreaded disease. 
asking why this happened is really not as fruitful or helpful as asking the questions what and how. What do we do to address this pandemic? How do we do so successfully? It's those two questions which got us the vaccine, right? But even without completely knowing why, it is answers to the what and the how questions that successfully help us emerge from this disease and move forward. Well, <laughs> back to the ancient Israelites. The prophet Joel looked at this army of grasshoppers as a metaphor <laughs> for human armies that could come to invade the Hebrews. So they had to ask, what should we do? How should we do it? If people could learn from this natural disaster, they might be spared a future military disaster or at least suffer less based on the, the changes that they make. What would God's people need to do? What do we need to do? Well, first, as you heard Pastor Eva say with the children, God's people lament. This is something we talked about back in Advent, Advent you might remember. We lament. We need to quiet ourselves and take stock of, of what's happened, what losses we endured, what, what sadnesses we've encountered, what mistakes we made, as well as where we did well, where God blessed and comforted and guided. We can have a good cry. A primal scream. It's prayer, fasting, and confession that were the order of the day, the ancients' tools to evaluate all that transpired. Those three are, are our tools, too. Lament. Second, after conducting that painfully honest assessment, we make changes. The Bible's word for change is repent. Yes, cry out to God, bewail the horrors and the losses, but learn from them and earnestly make meaningful changes to our lives, individually and corporately. So what do God's people do then and now? Lament and repent. Even Ron, lament and repent. What strikes me is how this ancient story is really our story. I mean, during COVID time, persons found their health compromised and, and many died. Others have been unable to earn a living and could not provide for their families as we saw those massive miles long food lines. They couldn't make their church offerings as, as, as they would have liked. Many have been discouraged, demoralized, brought low emotionally, and certainly our innocent and defenseless children have especially suffered. At the same time, we knew God was with us. And so we found ourselves worshiping in a new way called streamed worship. Grovers who continued to work or didn't need their government checks donated funds to ministries that directly helped persons in need. Thank you. Other Grovers revamped food distribution in Coatesville or made meals for persons experiencing homelessness in Westchester. Faith formation classes and a, and a virtual coffee hour allowed us to see one another in a safe, rather easy to use format. God provided blessing amid this trying time. And we know Disasters befall every generation, from the ancient Hebrews to you and me. And humans, for better or for worse, act like humans when confronting these trials. I mean, time marches on, but in so many ways, our human condition remains the same. What makes people of faith different is that we apply our faith and the lessons that we learn from our faith, we apply them to life, to help others, to help ourselves, especially in difficult times. So I have to ask, are we applying the lessons of an ancient disaster to a contemporary one by following the counsel of Joel and scriptures? Are we learning and making changes? 
I mean, just like that locust invasion could be a foretelling of a military invasion from Babylon, is this pandemic our opportunity to learn and be better prepared for some yet unknown future event that may befall? I mean, what if cyber criminals unleash wider and more disastrous digital devils than the solar winds hack or the colonial pipeline fuel crisis, or this past week's damage to 20% of the nation's beef supply? What if weather overwhelms failed human systems that, that provide public utilities to regions of the country larger than what the Texans endure? What if the Chinese Communist Party's nefarious plans for cryptocurrencies move resources to terrorist nations and have a disastrous effect on world financial markets? Or what if, sounds a bit crazy, but what if the Pentagon's former U, uh, forthcoming UFO report to Congress demonstrates that we're not alone in the universe or that another nation possesses life-threatening technology that we don't? Welcome to life and the fears that confront us in 2021. Truly, they are every bit as frightening as the challenges confronted by the generations that preceded us all the way back to Bible times. They're all unknowns. So are we learning the lessons of these past months, individually and as a church? What healthy changes have you made, have we made, that will make all of us better? now and in the future. Suffering need not remain suffering. It can lead to growth and goodness. Amid the unknowns, there are things we do know now that we didn't know before. Lessons learned. At Grove, that's why we're trying new things in worship, to help us worship better and to connect better in both digital and spiritual ways. We need to understand what's working and, and what's not. So we value and need your help. Voice your thoughts and, and your opinions. Complete the surveys, please. Worship's always a group effort. Granted, none of this, whether in church or at home, is always easy work. It's often difficult work. It's necessary work. Because disciples want to be better for God's sake, for others' sake, for our own sake. There are many unknowns in the future, except for God and God's love. We know them, definitely. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you to worship you and thank you. We are so blessed to be your children. All we have to do is look around. There are signs of your love and presence everywhere. In the beauty of the world we live in, in the peace and prosperity we enjoy and often take for granted, in the love of family and friends, in the whispers of your Holy Spirit in our minds and hearts. We give you praise and thank you for all these things. But what should we think of the pain and sorrow we also see? We struggle to understand why bad things happen and why ugliness and evil exist in the world. When a child sees no path but to end their life. When a person can only express anger by pulling out a gun and shooting someone. When a loved one is stricken with cancer and we feel powerless to help them. In the midst of pain or tragedy, keeping faith is so much harder. In our weakness, we cry out, where are you, God? How can you let this happen? And yet we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we know in our hearts that you love us and will never abandon us. We know that your plan is vast and beyond our understanding. We ask your forgiveness for the times we are weak and pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us and strengthen our faith. Help us to accept your will 
and to be a light for others to follow. Father, hear our prayer. Open the minds and hearts of people everywhere to your love and the promise of salvation that comes with accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Let your commandments guide us every day that we should love you, God, with our whole heart, our whole soul, and our whole mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. We ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, please. Renewing God, trusting in your infinite grace, we confess that we need your healing and your forgiveness. For all that is broken in our minds and bodies, we ask for your healing. For all that is amiss in our choices and our relationships, we ask your forgiveness. For all that works against life and blessing in our hearts and in our world, we open ourselves to your transforming grace. Heal us, forgive us, and make us new. Amen. By awesome deeds, you answer us with deliverance. God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. At this time, let us share the peace of Christ with one another. With you. For I received from the Lord that which I also handed on to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Friends in Christ, as I partake, I invite you to partake of these elements in your possession, too. Jesus, thank you for being our host and inviting us here. Thank you for this gospel feast, which reminds us of the great banquet in heaven. May that which we receive from you today, these spiritual gifts of love and grace, be gifts that we share with others this week to nourish their souls and to transform their lives. We pray this in your holy name. we have been fed at this table, let us go to feed the hungry. As we have been set free, 
Let us go to set free the imprisoned. As we have received, let us give. And as we have heard, let us proclaim. The blessing that you have received from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be always with you. Amen. Let us rise for our...